Okay. Yes, it's fine. So I'm admitting everybody. So, hello everybody. Welcome back to, to VSET. We are starting after the, the winter break. And I'm very pleased to announce today Frederick Kessler from HSC Paris, who is going to talk about a belief based approach to signaling. It's a joint work with Marie Laclau and Tristan Tomala. Marie is here. So, thank you, Marie, for joining us. And we have as guest panelists Rafael Boleslavsky and Laurent Mathebe. So, thank you for joining us today. So uh, just a, run, a reminder, next week, we're going to have with us uh, Vincent Crawford, who's going to talk about meaningful theorems, non-parametric analysis of reference-dependent preferences. Well, Frederick, thank you again for joining us today. The screen is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation. So that's a joint work with my regular co-author now at HEC, Marie Laclau and uh, Tristan Thomas. Uh, so it's a paper on uh, signaling games. So uh, a standard signaling games, uh, as we see in textbook and uh, uh, the Spence type of uh, signaling game, where you have, we have a, a, a sender who is privately informed about a state parameter. So that's his type. And he chooses a payoff relevant signal. So we have to see the signal as an action. It's not a signal like a statistical experiment in Bayesian persuasion. So it's just an action. And this, uh, so like a level of education uh, in the model of Spence. And this signal is observed by a non-informed receiver who, observe, after having observed the signal, it just shows an action. So it's a very simple, simplest class of uh, uh, dynamic asymmetric information games. So there are many applications in the literature of signaling. So this is well known. So in Spence, the job market signaling, it has been used for advertising. It's used also in uh, theoretical biology for courtship and territorial signaling. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's a uh, job market signaling, advertising, uh, courtship and territorial signaling, uh, also for product certification and evidence disclosure. And uh, we can also see uh, a simplified version of the poker as a signaling game. So what we do in this paper is we provide a geometric characterization of uh, all perfect Bayesian equilibrium payoff for the sender in a general class of signaling games. So we don't make any assumption of single crossing or uh, monotonicity or dimensionality of the action and signal space. The only thing is that we will assume, uh, at least for the moment, is that we have a finite set of types. So we do a belief-based approach. So, so we use this name because this name is used also in the literature now in uh, Bayesian persuasion. So to do that, we define interim value correspondence for the sender that are indexed by the signal. So for each belief for, of the receiver, we consider the set of all possible vector of payoff for the sender that can be obtained for some optimal mixed action for the re of the receiver. So for those who know uh, Bayesian persuasion now, is the, there, there, are, there are three differences here. So we look at the interim value, so it will keep track of the payoff of each sender type, not only about the exante value. It's a correspondence in the sense we don't look only at the highest possible value the sender can get, but all possible value he can get. And the third difference is that this correspondence may depend depends on the signal used by the sender. But if there is a single signal, we care only about exante payoff, and uh, we only care about the maximal value, we have the value function or indirect utility function that we use in let's say, based on persuasion, Kamika gets. Uh, 
so what we do, we, we will characterize the interim perfect Bayesian equilibrium payoff via the convexification of uh, this graph of interim value correspondence. And this convexification will be subject to incentive compatibility constraint because we don't assume that the sender can commit. So the disbelief-based approach is similar to the approach that has been used a long time ago in repeated games with incomplete information. Uh, first for zero-sum, Oman Mashler, and then for non-zero-sum by Hart. This technique has also been used to characterize geometrically equilibrium payoff in sheep toll games. So by Francois Forge, Oman and Hart, and similar approach also under the assumption of transparent motif by Chakra Borti and Arbank. And also I had um, a similar paper with Françoise in 2008, where we looked at uh, a belief-based approach for evidence disclosure game. But in 2008, the belief-based approach was not fashionable yet. Um, and of course, it's related to uh, games with commitment, so Bayesian persuasion. And a recent paper by Bolevlatsky and Shanmir uh, on signaling with commitment. Um, so the signaling game. So it's a very standard signaling game. So first, nature uh, uh, draws a type from a finite set. So for the moment, we, we make this assumption. We don't know if we can extend that from a full support uh, prior distribution, which is common to both the sender and the receiver. The sender, he observes the, the type T, so the state, and he chooses a signal and a chip talk message M. So uh, I will talk later why we look at a chip talk message as well, but the idea is that we don't want to put any constraint on what the sender can induce as belief for the receiver. So we don't want that... Uh, the set of belief you can induce is not restricted by the size of the signal space. So in particular, if we will have only one signal, we cover the case of cheap toll games. The signal will be, in addition, can be used to get new equilibria. But if there is a single signal, we will then our characterization will get the characterization of cheap toll equilibria. So the receiver, he observes directly the signal used by the sender and the message, cheap talk message used by the sender, and he chooses an action A. And the utility of the sender, which will be mostly U, so I don't put a subscript S here, but U is the utility of the sender, and the utility of the receiver that we, don't, we won't see much on the slide is denoted by UR, okay? And it depends on the action of the, of the receiver, on the send, signal of the sender, and on the state, but not on the message. That's why it's called a cheap talk message. So we don't make much assumptions. So except that T is finite, we assume that S and A are metric compact and the utility function are continuous. Uh, if I have time to give some arguments of the proof, I will assume there that S is finite and A is finite. And another thing we assume is that the set of chip talk message has at least T elements. So there are at least as many chip talk message as the number of uh, types for the sender. And this will be sufficient for our characterization as long as M is larger than the cardinal. If T of T, our characterization will apply. Is it too early for a question? No, go. Uh... Are you going to tell us anything about environments in which you don't use the cheap talk message at all? Uh, I will give you example because this question always come out. We don't have nice economic example where, uh, except trivial one, where we just look at a cheap toll game with a single signal. And then, uh, yes, if this cheap toll game has informative equilibria, then cheap talk message will be used. But in the, in the example I will show that is nice to illustrate, it's, it will be a kind of poker game. So cheap talk is useless. And in the Spence model, also cheap talk is useless. But for the characterization, 
we we need it otherwise the characterization would be a little bit different i can geometrically i will geometrically show some example where uh, cheap talk would help but i don't we don't we still we don't have yet uh, 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 a, a non artificial example where cheap talk helps okay uh, okay I'm sorry. I have yeah. a, a clarification question because uh, yes. you, you you call S a signal. So is it uh, another message uh, you, uh, the sender is sending to the receiver as well or not? It's an action. Think about S as an action. I just don't call it an action because now I, I call the okay. action of the receiver action, but it's just an action. So it's a, uh, in Spence is the level of education. Okay. Okay. It is a, it is also a, a message, you know, because whatever the receiver observes is also a message sent by the sender to the receiver somehow. Yes. So if all signal are payoff irrelevant, then this game is a cheap talk game. And uh, but S, yeah, both S and M will transmit information. Okay. Thank you. So I will present a very specific game, uh, especially it's zero sum. So don't believe that our characterization is zero sum. This week we looked at a variant of this game that make it non-zero sum, an interesting thing happened. Uh, but it's just simple to make the, 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 the illustration because I will illustrate our geometric characterization through this simplest non-trivial and we believe interest, still interesting example. So that's the example we give as exercise in, uh, in, uh, in course in, uh, in game theory when we look at uh, imperfect information game with imperfect, uh, uh, dynamic games with imperfect information and when we look at uh, Nash Ekilbe at this game. Uh, so we have two players. Uh, I assume here it's risk neutral. Uh, this week we looked at non-risk neutral players to make it non-zero sum, and it applies as well. But it's a little bit more heavy in terms of notation. So the the first player uh, puts uh, or both players put one euro on the table as a blind. Uh, the sender's private information is is his card, so he has two possible cards only: a high card and a low card. Okay, for those who know poker, it could be a pair of aces at the high card and a seven and two at the low card, and uh, the high card has probability p zero, and only the sender knows the, the card. Um, then the sender choose between multiple signals. So in the exercise we give to students, there are only two signals. He can fold. So I call this the signal zero. This is folding. I give up. And then the game end and the two euro on the table are uh, for the for the for the player for the receiver for player two. Or he raise. So in the exercise we give usually raise two. So here we look at slightly more general. He, he can raise one euro, two euro, up to S bar euro. And then you can think about S bar is putting all, everything on the table. So it's uh, all in. I put all my money on the table. Then finally, if some uh, raise happened, so if S is not zero, the receiver can either fold. So if he folds, uh, then everything on the table for the sender. And if he calls, then it depends on the card. We look at the card. If the card is high, uh, no, sorry. If he calls, he has to put as much as money as the sender. So if the sender has put three euro, then to call the receiver must put three euro to see the cards. And if he does that, then if the card is high, everything on the table is for the sender. And if the card is low, everything on the table is for the receiver. Okay. So I will switch back from the general model to this example repeatedly. So this is a signaling game. That's a signaling game I will illustrate later. Now let's go back to the general model. So in the general model, we will have to define perfect Bayesian equilibria. So a sender strategy determines what he's doing as a function of his type. Oops, sorry. Uh, so as a function of his type, a probability distribution of a signal and message, and the receiver, what he's doing as a function of the signal he gets and the message he gets, a probability distribution of an action. This strategy induces an interim payoff for the sender. 
and we will keep track of the interim of the payoff of the sender for each of these types. So VT is the payoff induced by this strategy for the sender type T. And it's just the expected utility of the sender according to this strategy. And then we also specify to define perfect Bayesian equilibrium, a belief system. Here it's trivial for the sender, so it's for the receiver. It tells us as a function of the signal he received and the message he received, the belief he has on the type of the sender, so a probability distribution of a T. Okay? Oh, I see many questions on the chat, but I don't look. Uh, so a perfect Bayesian equilibrium, so I did, that's fully standard. Uh, if the set of action and the uh, signal is of finite, this would correspond to even a sequential equilibrium. So first to do that, to define in an easy way the sequential rationality of the sender, I, def I define this set, Y of SP. So Y of SP is a set of all mixed action that are optimal for the receiver when his belief is P and the signal S has been used. So signal S has been used, the receiver has belief P on the type of the sender. He has an expected utility UR here that I wrote condensely to, that's the expected utility given Y and the belief P. So there are two sums here. So that's a set of action, mixed actions that are optimal for the receiver uh, given P and S. So that's, uh, yeah, fixing S and P. And then a strategy profile sigma for the sender, uh, tau for the receiver, with interim belief VT for each T as defined before is a PBE of this signaling game. If there exists a belief for the receiver satisfying the three usual condition, so sequential rationality for the sender, it means that regardless of his type, and regardless of the signal and message he, can, he, he, he may send, the equilibrium payoff he gets according to sigma and tau, tau is larger than what he would get, is at least as high as what he would get for, some, from, for any other message S and M. Okay, so in particular for S and M that he used with positive probability, he will be indifferent. And for those who he does not use with positive probability, he will have a lower or equal payoff. For the receiver, given this, it simplifies that given his belief new after message S and M for all S and M, it shows the strategy used after S and M is of maximizes expected utility given signal S and the belief new. And belief consistency, I don't write the formula, but it's a standard one. The receiver's belief is computed by base rule whenever possible. Frederic, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, it seems important here that you are distinguishing between S and P. Um, so in other words, for um, the same P, that could be generated by different tests. Um, <laughs> This is a bit unusual, right? Normally you would say, well, the action that the receiver takes only depends on the on the beliefs. It doesn't really matter on what the signal. So maybe I'm getting ahead of the whole the whole thing. It seems like this is gonna be important. That's I suppose if you could give me a hint as to why. <laughs> so why we may have different beliefs for different for the same S? Well, why you emphasize why capital Y is a function of S and P. It, it, it would seem to me that, uh, I mean, naively looking at this, I would just have it as a function of P. But you also emphasize the S. And no, that seems to so be what is optimal for the receiver and then what will be the payoff for the sender will depend on both. So imagine Spence where you have a pooling equilibrium with a, a level of education which is zero. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. And another I... pooling equilibrium where the level of education is uh, 10. So the receiver, it's it's banal. The receiver's utility then the receiver depends has on the it. same belief in both cases, but the, the level of education is different. So he may choose a different yeah, yeah. So, so, action. So, or not in the basic spans, but if he cares about the level of education. Yeah, yeah, also. yeah. So I, I forgot that you allowed the receiver's payoffs to depend on S as well. Okay, mm. yeah, 
That's it. Yeah, if, 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because sometimes in signaling game, only the sender's payoff depend on S, but here we allow mm -hmm. both the sender mm -hmm. and the receiver's payoff to depend on S. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, Can I ask one question also? Uh, yes. We're not placing any restriction on off path beliefs whatsoever at this point, right? Not yet. So, one possible direction for future research would be to see if this characterization can be helpful to see, to have a belief based approach of some refinement. But for the moment, we do not go further than, uh, than just PB. So, we can use off path beliefs to guarantee condition number one if we if we are able to in the model. Of path belief can Like be if I want to enforce a pooling equilibrium on something, I can say, if you deviate, I can put a very bad belief and a very bad, you know, a punishment. Exactly, form. so yes. So for, if some S and M is off path, then I can, you, I can choose a punishment belief such that this strategy will be a punishment and this will punish the sender. Perfect, that's all I was asking. Yeah. Thank you. And this will play a role here while it does not play a role when it's pure chip talk. So that's one difference with the characterization of equilibrium payoff with chip talk. Because with chip talk, PB and Nash characterization is the same, uh, while here it may be different. So we can even, we, okay, let me not enter to the detail of uh, equilibrium notions that we can use, but. Uh, if we do just use Nash equilibrium, then we don't have uh, the, the constraint that this is optimal if SM is off path and we don't have this, okay? But here we use PB. So, okay, so now I will uh, present a lo lots of notion to go to our equilibrium characterization. So first, so here we, I, I use the notations from uh, Forge and uh, Oman and Art mostly, but it's very related to some of the objects we defined for Bayesian persuasion. So E of SP, that's the set of all possible vector of payoff that I call interim value for the sender at P given S. So if S is used, is P is the belief of the receiver then he will choose some optimal action y, and I look, and then the sender will get a utility u of y s t when his type is t. So I, I look at all possible pay, vector payoffs, so profile uh, profile of payoff for each type that the sender can get when the receiver's belief is p and when the signal s has been used. Okay, so if there is s is cheap talk. So then this, uh, uh, this does not depend on S. And uh, we have the E of P, which is an object that appears also in, uh, uh, in, in, in cheap talk games. So not, but now the addition is that we have S, okay? And sometimes for those who know, this is called in Oman Art the, the equilibrium payoff of the silent game. But I don't use this terminology because it's maybe confusing. So once we have this uh, correspondence, so we have a correspondence for each S, we have a correspondence that map P to the set of possible payoffs that the sender can get with S and P. And we look at the graph of, his, of this uh, correspondence. So the, the pair, the set of all pair V and P, such that V is an, is an interim value for the sender. Okay, you, you usually just, to make the connection in Bayesian persuasion, we just look at the exante, so the expected value of this given P, and we look at the maximum. Here we look at the vector, so one for each type and not only the maximum. So let's go back to the to the poker we have seen before. So here I wrote, you can you don't have to read that, that the utility of the sender and receiver in this game, the net payoff. Okay. So if uh, the sender fold, he lose the one euro he had as a blind before. If he raise and the receiver fold, he gets the blind of the receiver, so he gets one. And if the receiver calls, then uh, the, and the card is high, then the sender gets the one plus s put on the table by the receiver, and otherwise he lose the one plus S that the sender has put on the table to, 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 to raise. 
and the receiver payoff here is just minus the utility of the sender, so it's a zero-sum game. But I repeat, we can have a receiver that have, have a different payoff than minus u. Uh, we have played a little bit with risk aversion, risk seeking. The characterization works as well. So then for each s, this y, remember, it's the optimal action of the receiver as a function of the signal. So it's not when s equal uh, uh, zero, uh, it does not matter. The game is over. So we look at when s is positive. So, so we just look as a function of the belief of the receiver, what he prefer, to call, to fold, or to or is indifferent. And we get a threshold that depends on S. So if the receiver believes that the probability, so P is the probability that the card is high, if this is low, then he prefers to call. And if it's high, he prefers to, to, to fold. Okay. So we have a threshold here that depends on S. And uh, the higher is S, it decreases to, to one half. It starts at three quarter and goes to one half. Okay. So the typical example we usually look at is with S equal to, and I will illustrate with S equal to. Okay. Okay, so now what is this E of P? What are the interim value for the sender in this example? So we saw just before, then when the belief of the receiver is low, that the belief that the, the card of the sender is, is, is low, then it will call. Okay, so when he will call, what will happen? The, the, this is the payoff of the sender when, the, when his type is high. So he will win. And this is the payoff he gets when uh, the card is low. He will lose. Okay, so he wins 1 plus S and he loses 1 plus S. If the receiver has a high belief, then he will fold. Okay, and then the sender, regardless of his, of his type, whether the card is high or low, we don't look at it he gets the one euro that was put as a blind for the receiver. And if P is equally exactly at the threshold, then the receiver is indifferent. So the sender can have any convex combination of this pair. And if the signal is zero, so this means the sender folds immediately, then regardless of his type, he loses minus one. Okay. So now I will look at this graph projected on the sender's payoff for each of his types. Okay? And it's this. So this is the payoff of the sender when, the, when his type, the type is high. This is the payoff of the sender when the type is low. This E of 0P is what he gets when he falls. So when he falls, the high type gets minus 1, and, when he, and the low type gets minus 1. So we are here. Regardless of the, prior, the belief of the receiver, he gets minus 1 regardless of his type. Okay. So for all P, we are here at minus 1, minus 1. Now, what happens when the belief is high? So now I look at the red curve. So here I look only for three signals, uh, zero, two, and four. So let that, let's look at two. So at two, we have a threshold for the receiver. When the belief is higher than two thirds, he folds. So when he folds, what happens? Then the sender gets one regardless of his type. So we have this point one, one for all P larger than two thirds. When P is lower than one third, uh, when than two thirds, then the receiver will call, okay? And when he calls, the, the good type will win free and the bad type will lose free, okay? So we are here. And when the belief is exactly at two thirds, then we have any convex combination between the two, so we have this line. We do the same exercise for uh, the signal four, okay? Then it's the, the threshold change, the payoff here change because now the payoff will be five or n minus five. And we get all these lines, okay? But let's just keep it. So this is the green curve, the red curve, and the blue curve are the graph of this interim value correspondence projected on the payoff for the sender. Yes, I didn't say I focus only on the payoff of the sender. Uh, the characterization may also work if we want to care about the payoff of the receiver, but just simpler here to focus on the sender's payoff. Okay, so now go back. we go back to the theory. So we need an, uh, another thing is to define what we call interim individual irrational payoff. And this does not appear in cheap toll games, but it will keep track of what happens off path. So in tier S, what is it? In tier S is a set of all payoffs 
that the vector again that the pay sender can get and that such that there exists a belief for the receiver and an optimal action for the receiver such that the payoff of the sender is higher than with this belief and this uh, strategy of the of the of the receiver for all types okay so what so so this it's easy to see that this is an equilibrium it will be an equilibrium condition to be in this set because if the payoff of this sender is not in this set then he can find uh, uh, he, he, he can then he, he, by using s regardless of the belief uh, that the receiver has uh, the receiver has one of the type will will uh, will strictly benefit from using s okay so that's an equi a necessary equilibrium condition for not using s instead if you don't have if the payoff of the sender is not in entire s regardless of the way the receiver behave in a sequentially rational way, uh, the, 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 the sender will benefit using S uh, compared to his uh, equilibrium payoff. So but this, uh, yes. Did I cut you off? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I just want to make sure I understand the, this uh, notion. We are saying that a payoff in, in tier S is kind of like justifiable. It's justifiable by a belief and an optimal action from the receiver such that the payoff I get in expectation is at least as high as... Um, as in expectation, as in... but for each type. Okay, that's in, important. It's not an exante condition, it's for all types. So when you, okay, so when you look, maybe I'm looking ahead a little bit to the next line, but at the intersection, I I I can possibly justify a different s with different p's. Yes, that's allowed. So uh, here it's there exists p. So for each s, when we will take the intersection, you can use another p and another y to 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 let's say to punish the deviation if you want. Because when I'm going to use a given S, I'm going to induce a, a, a splitting, I suppose. And so the, the no, piece... just a belief, just a belief, not a splitting, just a belief. When you use a S, you off path, and then the receiver has just a belief on 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 the on on the type of the sender. It's not a splitting, so the signal is just an action. So after this action, the sender has a belief. It's not a distribution of belief; it's just a belief. Okay. In a, when we look at PBE, we say that for any signal you have a belief, off path or on path. On path it should satisfy base rule, and off path, uh, off path it's whatever. But it's something. It's some belief and some optimal action associated to it. So this is a condition uh, for the sender. Uh, it's a necessary equilibrium condition for the sender. So just to be, maybe I will confuse some, but maybe it will clarify from some other. If I only ask necessary condition for Nash equilibrium, I have a weaker necessary condition because I don't have to justify what happens here with a belief. I can take any Y, any mixed action for the receiver. Here, because I restrict attention to sequentially rational receiver, this action Y should be justified as an optimal action for some belief P, okay? And I put no restriction here. So this should be true for any S, and this is, so this interior S is a set of interior mendibility rational payoff, okay? So in the example we saw before, that's, that gives this, but this is not interesting. Let's just see in the picture. So in the picture, uh, what is in tier zero? In tier zero is all payoff that is higher than some point in this graph, in this green, gra green graph, okay? So any point uh, which is in, at the northeast of minus one, minus one is, is a set in tier zero, okay? So this means a, 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 a payoff, of the sender cannot be outside this because by just choosing signal zero, he shows that he every type get at least minus one. 
Okay, so you we must be in this array. But this also applies to the red curve. When we look at the red curve, we have to look at all points that are at the northeast of the red curve. That's the interim individual rational for the for the signal uh, two. Okay, so we should have all payoffs that are at the northeast of this curve. This is in tier two. And the same for in tier four in this picture, we should be at the northeast of this blue line. If we are not, so if we are here, this means that there exists for each signal, so for the blue, there exists a belief so that everybody, every type of the sender is weakly worse off. And now we take the intersection of the two. And here, what is relevant is the intersection of this uh, part here, everything at the northeast of minus one, one, minus one. And this part, everything at the northeast of the blue. And we take the intersection, we get here. So I'm anticipating in the proof that I will not have time to do. A, ne a necessary equilibrium condition will be that we are in this gray area in equilibrium. The payoff of the sender must be in this gray area. And sorry, could you remind me the the meaning of the values of s zero, two, and four? It is uh, fourteen. So these, are the, 14. these are the. This is just an illustration uh, with four pos with three possible signal of the sender. So in my example of poker, s equal zero means he's folding. S equal two he means he, he, he bets two euro, and s equal four means he bets four euro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So does it mean that the sender will never choose S equal to? Yes, I was curious about that. That's why we looked at the more general, uh, a general version where you can you can raise any amount. And indeed, here in equilibrium, it will be that uh, he will uh, he will uh, if he raises, he, he will always go all in. Of course, this is not a general, I guess, in poker, but in this example, yes. And we are currently looking at if this is still true if you have risk aversion and risk loving to, to play a little bit with the example. Okay, so it's not done. We are almost done, but not yet. So we will do some convexification here of this blue, green, and red graph. Uh, but to do that, we have to do an additional thing is to consider the modified set of interim value. So I... I will not do the proof, but I will give you the, the idea of why we, we, we will modify it. So, and for those who knows cheap talk with transparent motive, maybe you, you will be able to, to make a connection. So the idea is that um, for interior belief, okay, so if a sender send two signal message that induce to interior belief, okay? Or no, even, even more. If he sends two signals with two different posterior, okay? If he induces two different posterior, uh, then in equilibrium, it should be indifferent between the two, okay? So when we, when we will want to keep track of incentive compatibility, it will be indifference condition. So we will have a condition that say, uh, a type is indifferent between the payoff you get from some posterior and the other posterior. That's when we are we are in a, a mixed equilibrium. Okay, the player will be indifferent. But if a posterior assigns probability zero to some type, then this type does not have to be indifferent he, because it will never induce this belief. So to keep track of incentive compatibility, not only for uh, uh, interior belief, but for belief that uh, puts zero to some quality, we will have to take this modified interim value. So what this modified interim value is doing is the same as the one we have seen before, but it's extended when the posterior belief assigns positive uh, zero probability to some type. Okay, so it is the same as the uh, interim value as before for interior belief. And in particular, it corresponds to the same VT when PT is strictly positive. But when a belief, when the belief P of T is equal to zero, then we only require inequality, not inequality. So we have a larger set. That's a larger set that has been used a lot in the 
literature on uh, repeated games with uh, incomplete information non-zero sum and also in cheap tall game. Uh, people like uh, Pesky call this the on onset of payoff. Okay, but here you, let's, I use uh, the, the, the term of uh, Oman and Art. Okay, so uh, we modify the Indian value for uh, when beliefs are, are not interior, when some type has, is assigned a zero probability. Okay? And now we look at the graph of this modified interim value correspondence. Okay? And we take the union of all these graphs. Okay? So I will take the union of the green, red, and blue graph I have seen before, extended. So what happens when we extend? Remember here we, for, the, for the signal zero, we only add one point. For all prior, we was here at minus one, minus one. Now what I do, I extend it. So when P equal one, so this means type L has zero probability, I increase, the, I, I allow any payoff which is higher here. And when P equals zero, this means the high type has zero probability, I allow him to have higher payoff here in this graph. I do the same on the red curve. So remember this point was obtained when P is larger than the threshold. And when it's equal to one, I increase the payoff of the low type because P equal one means the low type has zero posterior. I do the same here and I do the same here. Okay. Now we're almost done. <clears throat> uh, the only last thing is how, how do we convexify this graph? Okay. So now we take G, which is a graph, the union of the graph that I have modified of the payoff correspondence, and I will convexify it by keeping V constant. So keeping V constant is a trick to get incentive compatibility. So for those who have seen, uh, so here I'm cheating a little bit. V is just one dimensional, but here for those who know cheap talk with transparent motive, this is a kind of figure you see when we do the quasi-concavification. Uh, quasi so if this is a graph G, okay, we take the convex con uh, L by keeping V fixed. So we, we get all this area by convexifying this set, keeping the uh, vertical, the point at the vertical axis fix, okay? Every point here can be obtained as a convex, po this point here can be obtained as a convex combination of this point and this point, okay? And the idea will be that this belief, you will be able to split it with the strategy of the sender here and here in an incentive compatible way. Um, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. So I have, in fact, two clarification questions here. So my first one may be just notational. I, I don't really understand why uh, on the left-hand side this convex hole is indexed by V. I So first, it, the right-hand side does not depend on V. Ah, no, no. So, yes, sorry. So, so it's so, just a way to say keeping the payoff uh, the interim payoff constant. So this V is not, uh, he, he, okay, it's maybe it's a bad notation. It's, it's, to, it's to say the convexification by keeping the dimension of the, uh, of the, this dimension fixed. But this V has nothing to do with this V here. Okay. It's just to say, it's a, we are talking about keeping the payoff of the sender constant. Right, so this this notification, yeah, this notation. Yeah, this notation it, it, just looking in, ahead, it almost looks like a fixed point. No, no, know, no. Sorry, but it yeah. is not. And yes. the second clarifying question. So now you do have splittings, uh, but and so we're not specifying whether these splittings come from the costless message or the costly uh, message. But regardless, we know we don't have commitment, and so I. I so I, we don't have so so that's the idea. So we will we will we won't have commitment, but because I do not convexify any, in any way, I convexify with a condition that will guarantee or that's a the proof guarantee that it will satisfy incentive compatibility. So this means that uh, the splitting can you 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 want to obtain to do this uh, convexification. It will be incentive compatible in the sense that all type will either 
will be indifferent between all posteriors and juice and uh, and uh, will weakly prefer the posteriors and juice and posteriors that do not in induce. So those who that lead to uh, a belief zero for them, and that's the trick of the modified to also take care of pure strategy. Right, that, that's, uh, that's what I was going to say. So VPK belonging to G for OK, so that requirement is in, in, in different conditions. So there, this concept takes care of optimality of, of the cheap talk messages. Yeah, so for it's the moment, the, con yeah, the convexification can be obtained, and we don't see, can be obtained both from signal and cheap talk message. It depends where you go. So because here, G, I take the union of all graph for all possible signal, so if you generate a posterior for, uh, with a signal S1 and another posterior with a posterior S2, then you could do that with, with the same cheap talk message. But if it happens that you generate a posterior with signal S1 and another posterior with the same signal S1, that could happen, like in this uh, figure, if you think about this graph being just for one single signal, then you will use, uh, it's used by cheap talk message. But you will always be able to, gen for each signal, you will always be able to generate uh, any posterior distribution as you want. And that's the same as when we use the splitting lemma or base plausibility for uh, Bayesian persuasion. Except that in Bayesian persuasion, you have full freedom on what's the distribution of belief you induce, as long as the expectation is equal to the prior. Here we will not, we will not have and that's the insertive constraint. That's why you don't convexify this, this set as you want, okay? Because if you convexify this set as you want, you can split here and here, okay? And then you get the concavification in this uh, very simple example. Otherwise, here in this very simple example corresponds to the quasi concavification. But I will not only take care about the best, I will take care about all payoff you can obtain, okay? Just okay. to follow up, just one quick point. If you didn't have the cheap talk messages, you could only connect different graphs to each other. Yes, exactly. So that's the, what you define as a join in your paper. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can probably characterize it with the joint. We have not done it, but uh, let's see if, uh, yeah. If the question cheap talk versus no cheap talk is comes often, sure. I'm getting this question myself all the time. So yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay, so for the moment here we don't. It could be uh, with cheap talk message if you get two points with the same signal, or just with signal if you generate two 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 if you generate two points on two different graphs G S and G S prime. So the theorem now that I define all these things is, is relatively easy. So the interim payoff V is a PB interim payoff for the sender. If and only if uh, V is interim individually rational and uh, VP0 E can be obtained by convexifying this set G by keeping V constant. And again, yes, Laurent, this V here is a bad notation. So let, let's call it co- cause something, constrained convexification uh, in, yeah. Uh, so this gave yourself all equilibrium payoff for all possible priors. So this is useful, for example, it's, and it also gives us some uh, properties that we, we was not able, or we don't know if it's easy to get without this characterization. So, but so first, let I me- jump inside? Be, be, yeah. I, I can do it after the example, if you prefer. Uh, let me illustrate this in the example, and then okay. you. Uh, so this was the graph, the same graph as before, except that I didn't put the orange point here. Okay, so convexifying by keeping v constant. So people who are used to this characterization in sheep talk will see immediately. Some others are confused. So I have a three D version that Tristo has made after, if you prefer. I don't like the three D version. I prefer this version, but. When we have a point of intersection, so in particular this point here, what it means? So you have to think about a third, a third dimension where, the, where there is a P, okay? So P is pointing uh, uh, towards the screen, okay? And when we have a point of intersection here, what does it mean? So here we have a point where we have P equals zero on this green curve, 
And the payoff is this one, seven over three and minus one. We have another point on this graph G, which gives the same payoff, seven over three and minus one, uh, which is in this blue curve, which is for P equal three over five. So now, so we have two payoff, the, the same payoff. So these constants, seven over three for type, the high type and minus one for type two. So we have these two payoff, one for a posterior equal zero and one for a posterior three over five. So now what we can do is for all prior between zero and three over five, we can use a strategy for the sender that will split the prior, let's say one half to zero and to three over five. This is possible the usual way. Okay, we, there is a strategy that does that. And the strategy will induce the posterior three over five with the signal, with the blue signal, that's the difference with the, and the, the, the belief zero with the green signal. So this we can do. And now since the payoff of the sender and uh, the receiver is, is, is the same or the modified payoff is the same on these two posterior, we guarantee that incentive compatibility is satisfied. So basically it says that the guy who is randomizing between strictly randomizing between the green and blue signal is indifferent. And the, the type who is uh, inducing P equals zero, so, the, uh, so that's the, um, uh, another type who induce P equals zero. So this is type uh, uh, the, the low type. Uh, he, he prefers the payoff he get from this posterior than the payoff he would get uh, otherwise. Okay, so one one type is using a perfectly mixed strategy. Okay, so he, he must be indifferent, and the other uh, should have the conditions that the payoff he gets is higher than what he would get by using the other signal. So this is always tricky to ex explain this modified stuff, but this point of intersection means that the, if you think about just a perfectly mixed, there is indifference between the payoff it's obtained, so it's incentive compatible, okay? It's incentive compatible. Uh, you have indifference to, in, to generate P0 and P equal to third, so the sender will not have an incentive to, de to, to, to deviate from these strategies that split any belief between three over five and zero to the belief zero and three over five. So this is an equilibrium payoff. And we can do this splitting for all beliefs, starting belief, which is lower than three over five. If the starting belief is higher than three over five, we cannot split in a base plausible way to zero and three over five. So if the prior belief is higher than three over five, we are, we, we are here, and this is a non-revealing equilibrium. So there are other points of intersection. There are other pooling outcomes, but they are not in this interim individual irrational payoff, okay? So, I, this and this some of these points could be obtained as Nash equilibrium, but not as PD. So here, generically, we have a unique equilibrium payoff. If the prior is lower than three over five, we are here. So it's three over seven for type eight type and minus one for the low type and one one. Otherwise, one one means the receiver always fold in this example, and the sender always raise. Uh, and if, if the prior is high. Uh, okay, so, and this is in 3D uh, where we have VL, VH here, but in this dimension we have P. And uh, if we look at, so here we have, here we, we have the payoff uh, I have showed on the, ah, no, sorry, that, that's for only for two signal. I have removed the blue. So now I'm looking at this point here. If I remove the blue, the equilibrium will be here. If the sender cannot use the blue signal, uh, and then this is a representation of the convexification by keeping the payoff of the sender constant. So here we may see all prior between uh, this level two third and zero can split to this payoff and to this payoff. So here we are starting here, we split here, we split here, we keep it beyond the convex and we have incentive compatibility.
Uh, and this is, and we can do this more generally thanks to this representation. So indeed, the, the equilibrium, if you start with a prior of one half, will be always to go all in for the sender. And the more uh, cheap the sender has, so S bar is higher, the more payoff you will get. And in this game, it will converge to uh, three for the high type and minus one for the uh, low type. Okay. So if you have more, if you go can go all in and you have a, uh, 1 million euro, you will get uh, on average free. Okay. Yes, uh, Laurent, you still have your question? Yes. Um, so what I find very interesting with this theorem is the ability to separate the equilibrium requirement on the cheap talk side from the equilibrium requirement on the signaling side. So if I understand correctly, the second condition, VP not belonging to the convex hull of the graph. <clears throat> So this requires that there exists a splitting that in, that is going to uh, generate V, but it's a splitting which is also incentive compatible. So you have the right indifference condition there. So it takes care of the cheap talk side, but it leaves. Um, so if we had if we had just cheap talk with transparent motives, for example, we would be done with just this condition. Because you have signaling, you need something else. And so my question is is about this ability to separate these two things, which I find very interesting. So when I require a V to be an in tier, I'm thinking that I'm looking for justifi a justifiable P for every S. And, and what confuses me a little bit, and perhaps for example, I'm just trying to see if I answer the question myself, but how do I know that it corresponds to the splitting that comes from the second condition in which generated V? Like, don't I need... You don't care. You, you, this is important only off path. So off path, you 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 don't care about the strategy of the sender anymore. So there is no more splitting. You just have a belief. But what if it, so the, again? I have this 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 splitting generating V. What if so? It cannot be that what justifies V in interior is. Is, is not justified by the actual splitting generating V in the second condition. I, mean, I, I don't want to insist too much. It's my confusion, I'm sure, but I, so couldn't it be that at the splitting which generate V, second condition being in the convex hull of the graph, um, the VT that's generated by this, by, by this actual splitting is strictly less than uh, the utility I get by sending S by deviating. Um, so, so V in interior uh, cap captures that you will not have an incentive to deviate to any signal because there will exist a belief of paths that will punish that. But uh -huh. the, the, the actual splitting that you use for your equilibrium strategy is, irre is, is irrelevant of path. So think about how you punish a sender in a signaling game or in any dynamic game. You have a candidate equilibrium, whether you started from the fully revealing or a fully pooling off path, the belief you have does not depend on what you started with. I can have any belief. So if you if we started with a fully revealing equilibrium, I can have a belief of path that is uh, interior, one half, whatever. And if I started from a pooling, I can have off path a belief which is say I assign priority one to the high type. So the the belief that is used here of path as as nothing is not related to the splitting induced by the equilibrium strategy. Is, does this answer a little bit the uh, question? Frederick, around yes. three four minutes. Yeah. Thanks. Is it is it too early for a comment yet? So let, let, on this me, exact give, point, give I think this point. is a great point because in tier, like you've separated the on path from the on path uh, off path. So mm -hmm. V belonging to interior takes care of all of the off-path beliefs. Mm -hmm. If you want to put additional restrictions on off-path beliefs, it's going to affect the shape of interior. Exactly. That's, that's my hope, yeah. 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 Because this is, actually, this is an, an equilibrium, this is a Nash equilibrium condition. You can uh, take a weaker version of this to get the Nash equilibrium, and you can take I guess, a stronger version of this to get some refinement of PV. That's, that's the hope. Uh, okay. I yeah. will skip all the proof, but I will just 
give you some uh, general result we get from this. Uh, the first one, which I think is nice, is um, we know from the equilibrium characterization, basically the convexification, we can, we can by Karateodori, we know that we, we know we can bound the number of posterior we have to generate. And uh, this is capital T. If we started with T types, we can gen we we the the convexification we obtain can be obtained with only T posterior. So this means that even if we have a continuum of signal, continuum of action, and we have uh, ten types, we know that to characterize the equilibrium payoff, not the equilibrium strategy, but the payoff for the sender, we can restrict without loss of generality to equilibrium where there are at most T possible posteriors that are generated, okay? So this, uh, so you don't have to do the exercise of looking at all possible support. Uh, you just need to look at the support of size T, T possible posteriors. Uh, this, this is the, and, and you have to add T plus one if you want also to, to have in, in, in inside the characterization, the payoff of the receiver. We also have existence because there is a result by Manelli in Econometrica that that if S and A are not finite, you may have even in one BF game where the utility is continuous, you may have absent, you may not have a PBE without chip talk, but it shows that with a rich mess, enough message space, we get existence. So here we show that everything, as long as M is larger than T the equilibrium payoff of the sender is independent of the size of M, as long as M is larger than T. We know that the equilibrium payoff when M is big, it, it will be the same. So we have exi an existence result as well. So if you want a technical answer of why we have chip talk, if this gives us existence in case S and A are not finite. The characterization of chip talk is a particular case. It's here, so we don't, oops, no, sorry. We don't have the interior condition, and that's why in a ship talk, PB and Nash are the same. That's another way to see it. Gives us also a necessary and sufficient condition for pooling equilibrium. I still want to show a result on transparent motive because that in ship talk, people have seen that uh, a lot. So transparent motive means that the sender's utility does not depend on this type. Then we can simplify. This is not exactly the G I have presented, but it's a simplified version of the G, where the only difference is that here, V, we don't care about T anymore, okay? Because in equilibrium, every type will get the same payoff uh, in equilibrium because it's the same utility, okay? And then we have a, character, a simpler characterization of PB payoff, and I wanted to show this theorem. So, uh, with transparent motive, we can, as with transparent motive with chip tool, characterize the best equilibrium for the, the best PB equilibrium for the sender. And the proof of this theorem is uh, use the uh, same kind of proof as in litlowski ravin So, in, but now instead of concavifying the value function, the value function in uh, litlowski ravin does not depend on, on, on S. Now we, we look at this value function. The maximum payoff the sender can get uh, when the belief is P. Now it depends on S. You take the maximum for all signal. You take the quasi-concavification of this, and that's the maximum ex equilibrium payoff the sender can get in a signaling game with transparent motif. Uh, and uh, and then the, this is a condition for uh, ship talk not be useful. So if each if each of these value function for each s is quasi concave, then uh, ship talk is useless. So that's an example where this blue graph. So now we are in two dimension. This blue graph is not quasi concave. So if you cannot use cheap talk, you can only, the maximum payoff you can get with PB is one by splitting here and here because you you want to you cannot uh, you, if you want to generate two posterior you have only two uh, these two signal you have to use the blue signal and the red signal you cannot go here and here because going here and here is the same signal but two different cheap talk message so that's an artificial example where or an example 
where the maximum PB payoff with chip torque is larger than without chip torque. That's another slightly less trivial uh, example where just doing chip talk and pulling on a message or just uh, signaling with the signal but not using chip talk gives you nothing at the prior while by combining the two, so sending three different pairs of signal and message. So here we need three because now we have uh, uh, three types uh, allows to get a payoff which is uh, higher. And we also have a characterization when the game is zero sum and the characterization when the game is zero sum we can do when the game is zero sum, basically commitment or not is irrelevant uh, by the maximum theorem. So the, 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 the PB payoff is the same as when the sender has commitment and then we can obtain the, the payoff by a concavification. So if you do that in the poker example, you can just draw a two dimension line. So, so now you can say, okay, why not doing this immediately is much easier. Uh, Whenever you change the game and it's not zero sum anymore, so I put a little bit of risk love in seeking or risk uh, aversion for the receiver. When you do the exante solution, you will get another solution that is not incentive compatible in uh, without commitment. So I have done, we have done this uh, graph when we change a little bit the payoff so that it's not zero sum anymore. And the commitment solution will be strictly higher than the highest payoff you can get at a PB. And this is it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, we have uh, consumed a little bit of the, the time for comments, but as Rafael already mentioned, no part of his last intervention was a comment. So I guess we're fine. So, uh, I mean, uh, Rafael, uh, Laura, the, do you want to make final questions or comments? No, that's okay. Well, that's the questions on the fly. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's a great paper. I mean, I've thought about some related issues, I think, as all of you, yeah. the authors certainly of this paper, well know. Um, I, I've often thought about this problem. And uh, it was too tough for me. So I'm delighted to be able to read the paper and to know how to approach it going forward. Uh, so thanks very much. I very uh, much. If you have ideas of what kind of class of game we would look at uh, to, bec because I have also, we have all done the graph for Spence, but Spence is not super exciting because you have, uh, or, you can, with this characterization, you can get all the complex hybrid equilibria that are relatively annoying to characterize fully, but the characterization allows to have, have them fully. So you have all the mixture, possible mixture you can have. But in the Spence models, they are not very interesting in the sense that these equilibria are either always dominated by the pooling equilibria or the separating equilibria. So that's why we use the poker example because there is no, it's not pure pooling or pure uh, separating equilibrium. The, all the equilibria for some prior at least use some randomization and then it use all the machinery uh, of this uh, splitting. But when we only focus on pooling and separating, uh, we don't need this. Thank you. So there's also time for, for questions from the audience. I don't know if there's anybody in the audience that wants to to, to make a question. Um, can, can I uh, maybe ask a little bit? Um, so uh, drawing a graph is not really the ultimate uh, project. It's, it's, it's interesting, but the question is what um you know what 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 is this useful for the, the representation so when when i say representation it's it's a way to to represent a, a game that that is better than other representations that that is that is useful in some sense so i'm guessing um so i yeah yeah what what does what does it give me so to speak <laughs> so I think, so yes, it's useful to analyze example or class of example. I wouldn't have analyzed uh, 
poker game uh, with uh, any number of ways and now even adding a risk aversion with the standard uh, way we look at let's look at all mixed strategy Nash equilibria and do the exercise for all prior so what is nice is that this this exercise when we, we do this convexification it gives you the equilibrium payoff for all prior so in in general when you look at it you do it prior by prior and you redo the exercise so here we get for all prior and um, and we and also we can get some general result where we don't have to draw this graph. So I had a list of corollary where you, for example, yeah. one of the results that says uh, we can look at uh, t number of posterior. So this is known in chip talk. It was not clear in in signaling that you can bound the number of posteriors that are used by the size of the state space. Um, and the existence also, this is, we don't need to, to, to draw the graph. And also, yeah, these questions that we have not fully covered only in the transparent motif case, but condition for cheap toll to be useful or not. Um, but yeah, I would say, why, what, why do we care about the concavification and the quasi concavification uh, just to draw a graph, right? <laughs> uh, so. No, but it gives this existence in some cases, right? Mm. I also I also find interesting you know, the result uh, on the on the number of uh, posteriors that can be induced in equilibrium. You can restrict to a number of posteriors equal to the number of of, of signals realizations, right? That was was that the types, result? Types of types. Types, yeah. Oh, oh yes, of course, types. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I mean, for instance, in particular, for some particular, I mean, simple versions of poker or at least casino games. Okay, probably you can say. I mean, if we want to solve the game, we only need to look at this finite number of procedures, which seems like a way simpler problem than the problem of just still solving the game by itself. Yeah, because even in this simple poker, we when you have, you can raise with multiple signals, then you would first worry, is it possible to have an equilibrium where I randomize between... Uh, a signal, and uh, you do the exercise to so see you now that I get I get a contradiction. Here we know you only randomize between two two signals. That's it. You know so which signals and the characterization tells us that in this particular case it's either fold or all in. But uh, uh, yes, and if you have two types and uh, uh, what we looked at the the Spence model with two types and a continuum of level of effort. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it has been proved or maybe that you all equilibrium payoff, you you, you, do, you have only to look at two possible level of effort, even if there is a continuum. Uh, so I think, yeah, this is yeah. useful. Of course, one, once we move, that's why we also assume finite number of types, maybe because this will be lost once we have a continuum of types. But then the geometry, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you. So, any, any other question? Yeah, we have maybe a couple of minutes for our final question. So, I have one question, but I think it may be obvious, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. Also, because Francois is in line, but so, uh, so in this uh, uh, forge job market uh, example, uh, in which we have that is only chip talk, and sometimes it takes infinitely many around to get a specific payoff. Uh, is it obvious that now when you introduce signaling, then you can get in a static game any payoff you want? Like, does, does the question make sense? Yeah, fully. So that's a that's a project for the next step. So ah, um, okay. So it's not okay. Uh, so for the moment, we just focused on uh, one stage of signaling. Um, of course, if you take the particular case where there is a one signal only, we know from Forge example and the characterization of Oman Art that multiple stage of chip toll between the sender and receiver may expand the space. So in particular, it will apply to our setting. So in our setting, if we say there is only one signal, then you will need multiple stages to characterize the set. So then instead of having the convexification uh, of this graph by keeping the payoff constant, the characterization that is used there is that you alternate between signaling and jointly control lottery. 
So you, you, you take convex combination of continuation payoff at each stage, and this gives you the, the Oman R D and for deconvexification and this span. So yes, of course, we think about this, but for the moment, we just wanted to clean the, the one stage case. But we can construct artificial example, and best scenario would be to have a more economically relevant scenario where first you use some cheap talk message as a function of how the discussion go, you use a signal and maybe you talk a little bit more with cheap talk message and you get an outcome that could not be obtained by just pure chip talk or just by one stage of signaling and chip talk. But this example can be constructed for sure. We don't have the characterization yet, but we believe that the characterization in terms of deconvexification and demartingal of Forge and Oman art could be extended as well to game with signal. The only thing is that it's not clear how we model multiple stage. So one idea would be to say, if you use a signal, you use it only once, because if you start to be able to repeat, to repeatedly use signal, this may, but one simple idea would be to, you use your signal whenever you want. So you talk, then you use your signal, and then you can talk again. And yes, we can get, we have not the proof of the characterization, and we don't, we have not analyzed a detailed example, but uh, yeah, that's one project. PB will be harder. <laughs> Nash, yes, but PB will be somehow uh, more. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, I guess it's already time to finish the formal part of the seminar. So we're going to stop the recording. Um, we're going to stay for a few minutes for a more informal talk. So thank you, Francoise, and thank you, uh, sorry, Frederic, and thank you all for, for joining us today.